after the ship smuggling arms on the way to the terrorism scene in the north. Iran, through its messengers Hezbollah and Hamas, and the other terror organizations are trying to hurt the core of the civilian population in Israel. Israel's defense minister talking today about this. 500 tons of weapons, according to the Israeli military, 10 times the largest seizure in the past. Discovered by the Israeli Navy. The load includes Katusha rockets, 107 millimeter rockets, bullets, hand grenades, artillery shells, and mortars. The Israeli Navy commandos stormed the Antiguan flagged uh, ship 100 miles off of Israel's coast in the Mediterranean Sea. Now, these containers all clearly were marked Iran Shipping Lanes Group. The cargo certificates show the load originating in Bandar Abbas, Iran. Israel says the weapons were intended to be offloaded in Syria, ultimately given to Hezbollah guerrillas. Iran is denying it shipped the weapons and missiles. We are back with the panel. What about the latest with Iran? Charles. Well, it looks as if our smart diplomacy, our engagement with Iran, that continues working. They crack down on dissidents. They are their supreme leader, particularly insulted us in a speech yesterday. They, they dither with us and insult us by rejecting our offers of uranium enrichment uh, in our negotiations. And now we discover this, as you say, unbelievably large shipment of weapons uh, intended for Hezbollah. Now, everybody understands what Hezbollah and Hamas are about. Uh, they are intent, self-declared, on destroying Israel and never accepting a settlement of any kind. So this is about war, war making, the proxies of Iran. Ultimately, these weapons are intended to attack Israeli cities and kill as much as possible. Uh, and the Israelis have demonstrated this in the capture, hoping the world will do something, but of course it'll do nothing. Tomorrow at the United Nations, the Goldstone Report, the, the condemning Israel's uh, defensive action in Gaza earlier this year, is going to essentially outlaw Israel's self-defense against terror attack. That's how the world responds, and America now is engaged in useless negotiations over settlement freezes which are entirely irrelevant uh, regarding this issue of Iran, Hezbollah, or Hamas. Mara, again today we had uh, demonstrations and protests in Tehran that were put down by uh, the regime. Uh, the administration, the U.S. administration uh, in David Axelrod said that the administration is not naive about what we're dealing with here, uh, but says that there is a united international community putting the pressure on Iran. What about that? Well, the White House certainly hopes there's going to be a united international community putting pressure on. The problem is that, that Barack Obama was pretty clear. He said he wanted to try negotiations, but if they didn't work, his patience wasn't going to last forever. He was hoping that by making the extra effort, he can convince the Europeans and the Russians and the Chinese to come on board with tough sanctions that's supposed to be plan B. But so far, he hasn't gotten any agreement from the Russians to do that. And he, we've even seen this extraordinary spectacle that inside of Iran, the opposition, the people that we're rooting for, um, sometimes not loudly enough, but we are rooting for them, are actually putting pressure on Ahmadinejad not to agree to a deal with uh, the international community on nuclear weapons. It seems like that is the one thing that the Iranian community, all political spectrums, can agree on in Iran, that they want to have weapons. Fred, in the meantime, mm -hmm. there's back and forth about whether uranium is going to be shipped out of Iran to mm -hmm. Russia and France. Mm -hmm. They were going to do it. They weren't going to do it. Now they're not going to do it again. Well, I thought they were willing to do small amounts over a long period of time, which is, you know, uh, just stretching out a, a delaying tactic. Meanwhile, they're the still enriching. Good at. They're still enriching their uranium. Yeah, of course they are. Yeah. They're, they're still enriching. And, and what they've succeeded in doing is, is, uh, is setting their, their real enri enrichment aside, and we're talking about all these side issues. You know, are, are we going to go, when are we going to go in and inspect this plant that's not finished yet? Uh, you know, what about sending uranium to Russia and so on? These are side issues that, uh, that really don't matter. On the engagement policy, what were the two countries in the Middle East that the engagement policy of President Obama was most aimed at? You know, that he would be, he would talk to them and or his administration would and be respectful and conciliatory and non-threatening. Uh, and those countries are Iran and Syria, the two countries involved here. 
it's so obvious, as Charles suggested, uh, well, he did more than suggest, uh, that that policy is absolutely not working. I mean, we see all the things both of those uh, countries are doing. Uh, and, and, and there was another one that you didn't mention, Charles. Look, if the Iranians were, gonna, were warming up to the conciliatory approach of President Obama, would they be having a huge celebration of, of the takeover of the American embassy in Tehran 30 years ago? Well, well, that's what they were doing today. There's some good footage on it in, on your show. And yet that's what's going on. I mean, here's my fear and, and, uh, about the engagement policy is that it is not a means to achieve something. It is an end in itself. And so we'll just have engagement forever and ever, regardless of whether it achieves anything. And, Last word. And the Iranians are, are, are interpreting it the correctly as a sign of utter weaknesses, and the world is taking note. But we don't have an unlimited amount of time. At some point, in fairly short order, the Iranians are going to have a nuclear weapon. That is it for the panel, but stay tuned for the name game.